This is the Prusa Core 1. This is not just another Core XY machine. This machine is unique in a few different ways. This is also not Prusa's first Core XY machine. This is their first Core XY enclosed printer that is geared for the just regular consumer market though. So the Core 1 is obviously fully enclosed. It has an all steel exoskeleton frame that makes it very rigid. The nozzle is good for 290, the bed 120C, and it has a chamber temp that's good for 55C. That's an active chamber temp, so it has fans and thermistors in there. It'll automatically adjust it to what you need it to be, but it does max out at 55C. The build volume is 250 by 220 by 270 in the Z. They say this is a 30% larger print volume than the uh, MK series. I do think most of that is in the Z, and I personally don't print a lot of tall prints. I don't know, maybe you do. I did print this though. I think uh, I love this model. I think this came out pretty cool. In fact, I like it so much. I also printed it on the Mark IV, so you can see the size difference. And I printed it on the Mini. Let's see here. 401, Mark IV, and Mini. Even if you're not going to use the full Z on this, it's still a nice thing to have. The other nice thing is, Prusa says this takes up 50% less space than the MK series. Let's take a closer look. Before we get into the unboxing, I think it's important to talk about who this printer is for. In my opinion, this printer was designed for the average consumer who prints PLA, PETG, ABS, or ASA. But because of the active chamber temperature control, you're going to easily be able to print PC or nylon. That's it though. Keep in mind, the nozzle on this machine is good to 290C. That's going to limit you on some of those other entry-level engineering grade filaments. Like PPS, I think PPS starts at 315C on the nozzle. The printer showed up and the box was actually in very good condition. That's Gertrude. I think she has her eye on the Harbios. In the top of the box, you're going to find all the usual items you'd expect. I ordered an extra build sheet, so mine came with two. There's a power cord. A book about all the different filaments Prusa makes, which I find very interesting. Like, did you know that Prusa makes Ultim? They call it PEI 1010. And like a proper high temp material, it requires a nozzle of 395C and 150 on the bed. Dang, that is hot. Anyways, then there's a 3D printing handbook, a checklist that shows all the different things that Prusa checked on the printer, the feet, a thumb drive, and of course, a bag of Harbios. They also threw in an entire roll of Prusament Galaxy Black PLA. The next part felt really strange, but you actually pick the printer up out of the box by cardboard handles. It held up just fine, but it felt really strange. On the side of the printer where the filament would go, there's another box. Looks like it has the display, a small accessory bag, and a toolkit. This is a pretty clear message, isn't it? Do not clean panels with IPA. Use only alcohol-free cleaners or soap and water. Prusa is known for building a premium product. Quality materials, excellent printers, and that includes the instructions. Where you can get into trouble, where I can get into trouble, is if you don't read everything all the way through. You think you can skip ahead. Like this little bit here, this is good. Never lift the printer by any of the cables. Now that one almost got me. See how handy this is? I tried lifting up the printer with this and quickly realized that was not the right move. Dug back in the instructions, it says it right there. Another thing. 
and I've seen uh, a few other people where they missed this step. You gotta install these feet. I already had it flipped up, ready to set on my table. Scratch it up. It says right here, install the feet first. If not, you'll scratch your table. And I do not want to scratch my table. So let's get these feet put on. If you're wondering, this is not water. That's IPA. Not the fun kind from Friday night. Just the kind that degreases stuff. Now that that's done, we can move on to the next step, which I believe is installing the display. Attaching the display seems pretty straightforward. First thing we're gonna do, looks like you slide this up on the right side. There it is. And that just pops off. It's held on with these magnets. Then you get the display, and there gives the instructions give excellent direction on how to plug this in the right way, which direction, I should say. But I don't think they intended for someone with big sausage fingers to do this. It's a little difficult to get that in. All we have to do then is plug this ground in and attach this plate. And tighten these Allens. Keep in mind, this is just a display. You're not tightening down a lug nut on your car. You don't have to go crazy with it. And that's it. I'm about to Turn the printer on and get it to run through the calibration, get the Wi-Fi set up and all that. I'm pretty sure we're going to have to have these taken out to do that. And let's get this bed put in. You know what we're going to do before we print anything is uh, get some of this plastic repellent put on there. This is good stuff. I think it's always a good idea to put this on right away. Next up is the Wi-Fi. This is the easiest printer to connect to Wi-Fi. This is something interesting about this door. It kind of will, it has like a catch here. So you have to give it a little extra force to get it to go all the way back. But it will catch itself there. I personally like that it's plastic and not glass. Um, you don't have to worry about breaking it. But what I don't really care for is how loud that is when it closes. That is totally nitpicking but I might try to figure out a way to make this quieter. It looks like there is there is actually some foam around here, but it, it's not enough. It's still, when it closes, it's loud. I wish it was a little bit softer. Maybe a little extra foam can be put in here to fix that. But so far, I'm very impressed. All right, it is peel time.
Yeah, I'm pretty sure since they gave us these extras and the fact that there's so many missing that they meant for us to pop these out to make this easier. All that was fun, but how does it print, right? For my first print, I chose the Bonkers Benchy. This is an eight minute Benchy. For what it is, I think it came out great. All right, that was pretty quick. Let's see what this Benchy looks like though. That is very nice. Little issues up here. Right here it's a little ugly. Same here, but for as fast as this was, this is very nice. <laughs> That's a little ugly up there. And it's very light. I mean, I don't know if you can tell the difference. This is a standard. This one. What was this one? Oh, this is ASA, but still much heavier you can just feel how thin this is but that's how you get the speed right this isn't the by the book this is the bonkers overall very nice the next one is from autodesk and kickstarter it's the fdm 3d printer assessment there is some stringing but i feel like there's always stringing on this the ho overhangs look okay I feel this print is pretty tough for everybody, and I think this printer did a pretty good job with it. I think everyone knows what this is. This is from Clock Spring. It is the Torture Toaster. This is the nicest one I've printed to date. The toaster mechanism works smoothly, and it looks great. The last test print is a first layer in the full size of the bed. This printed pretty quick. I think it took about 20 minutes. Prusa Core 1, first layer. Rolls. Oh, it does crack. It doesn't pull apart, but it did crack. It looks very nice. It's hard to see, but it looks great. Wish that wouldn't have cracked, but this is PLA. I don't print a lot of PLA. Looks good.
Oh, and lastly, I had to throw this in because I absolutely love this print. And uh, as it was a tuned G-code from Prusa, of course, it came out absolutely perfect. And I love it. And yes, I said it. This printer is unique. Let me explain how it's truly unique. First, I believe this is the only enclosed printer that can print PLA with the door and the lid closed. You just have to open the vents on the top. Otherwise, the fans automatically regulate everything else. It's also the only Core XY that comes in either fully assembled or in kit form. The way they recess the side panels does two things. Mostly, it reduces the chamber size, making it much easier to heat and regulate the temp temperature. Second, it actually ties into my next point. Prusa wants you to mod this printer. Not only is it obvious with the design choices, but they have literally said it. They sell what they call a hacker board. At a time where companies are locking down, Prusa has decided to go the total opposite direction. Let's talk about the extruder. I really like this extruder system. I dig the planetary gears, and I like that massive drive gear. The only thing I wish was different was I wish the cover was clear so I could see those gears moving. The next extruder on this printer has had a facelift. It looks much more refined than the rest of the MK series. We won't even talk about the Mark IV S. Yuck. Anyways, I love how the extra fan on this is located on the back side of the tool head. I personally feel that that's where it should have been all along. And I would say that's a common theme on this printer. Everything seems to be more refined and more dialed in. This feels like the first Prusa printer that is ready for the consumer that doesn't want to tinker or build a project. Do you know what I'm saying? I know Prusa has always offered ready to go printers, but this one looks the part. It shows up, it just looks finished and complete, and it works. Now, if you still want a project, you can buy the kit. But if you just want a printer that looks finished without wires and gears showing and screws, this is it. Well, I don't want to forget this. I think this is the chamber thermistor. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be mounted in that hole or if it's supposed to just be hanging out there like mine is. So this is it, right? Everything is perfect. Don't get me wrong, it's not all been rainbows and unicorns. So far I've printed Prushmint PLA and Jesse PETG, oh, and Prushmint PETG, and they were all excellent. I did run into some troubles with Polymaker PETG and Push Plastic PETG. I think I have the Polymaker sorted out. Um, I think it's gonna run at 250C with 30% fan or 245C with 20% fan. At that, I'm getting pretty good results. The push plastic, I still don't even have that figured out yet. I don't know. I don't know what it's going to take for that. I'll, I'll get to it, but as of right now, it's push plastic is still printing a hot mess on this. I think it's fair to say that I obviously like Prusa printers, but I feel like this one is a whole nother level. So I don't think you can go wrong buying this. For some of you younger folks, you may not know, this is called a book. Uh, it's a paper product. Um, we make this from dead trees. Why? I don't know. <laughs>